Good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in to Narcology Unscripted. Today's subject is going to be why a Hoover is likely from the narcissist. Guys, take a quick second, like and subscribe, and then comment down below if you agree with this take or you don't. Make sure you grab your coffee or your tea. Good evening around the world. Thanks for sitting in to the Narcology Morning Show. Cheers. Well, you know what a narcissist is all about. If you don't know, they have a people addiction. People will mirror back self-worth. Uh, people who do things for them will, will give them a sense of power and control, which is a sense, a uh, major sense of supply. And they usually try to attain that in certain groups and especially uh, love interests. And if you look at what type of fuel sources they attain and, and their main supplies are usually, excuse me, set in supplies like a family member, could be a parent or a sibling, a son or a daughter or a bestie. But uh, they really enjoy most of all a love interest because they can manipulate throw th this person away and keep coming back to this well. But with all senses of supply, they drop you as soon as they are distracted with another source. But they always want you waiting for them. They always want you easily accessed. It doesn't matter what type of fuel source. So you'll see them disappear for three to six months but they'll call or text you out of left field wanting you to get back to them right away. And if you don't, they will guilt you and say things to get you to get back to them. Like, I thought we were friends. I thought you, you, I thought we were closer than this, this type of guilt. And the normal person doesn't do that because we understand that if someone disappears for a while they're trying to better their lives or they met somebody or whatever the reason is we're not going to guilt this person to get back to us in that fashion but it doesn't matter a narcissist will always overpress the situation and you can you can tell by a narcissist by the way they do things like that they'll they'll uh, put the gas all the way down on some in a school zone guys it's like, I haven't heard from you in six months. Why are you getting mad at me? You have to be more attentive than a 911 operator for a narcissist because they have this tunnel vision. That's if you disappear on them for three to six months, it's the end of the world. They don't look at you like, go, go boy or girl. You're better in your life. You met somebody. No, they're really going to take it difficult because they need people for their own self-worth. So that is just a microcosm of a romantic relationship. Let's look at why they are prone to Hoover because they're with you. You've made a commitment to the narcissist. Everything is going swell. <laughs> you have bought into everything that they have said. They're good at making you feel like they are in it for the cause. You're the only person for them. There's no way they could ever stray away. So you let your guard down. And that's why after the fact, you're left confused going, really, this person? Wow, they're really good. Because I never would have guessed this person is capable of this. Well, that's what they want, guys. They want you to let your guard down. They want to put you center of their universe. And for the most part, they are with you. They are enjoying the relationship with you. That's why a lot of you can think back going, it was going so well. And then all of a sudden, bam, because they're opportunists, guys. It was going well at first because there was nothing else on their plate competing with you. They're, they're only loyal to the ones that they deem that nothing is better at the, at the moment. But as soon as a goal comes in and you're in the way of that goal, you are expendable. Whether it be a career goal, whether it be a personal goal, fitness, career, travel. If you're in the way, you are expendable. It doesn't matter 
what they have said to you. They don't, they're not loyal. They don't care about vows. They don't care about words. They don't care about their commitment. Especially when it comes to human beings. If someone that they deem better comes by, they will drop you in two seconds. Because this person is offering something that you don't have. Whatever that may be. And you don't realize this until after the fact that you actually see the new supply. You're putting the pieces together. Uh, Mine just happened to be goal-oriented, and I'll explain that. Uh, uh, Those of you, check out the last video, uh, my story. This is kind of the follow-up version of why that happened. And this goes... This will help somebody also because uh, I had a vasectomy and we both agreed that we didn't want any more kids. So we got married and everything was fine. Everything was great, jovial. The first nine months were the best. You know, you think in the love bomb that you have found heaven on earth. And so your soulmate, you buy into the word soulmate because they are so prevalent with that word. And they're posting you up on Facebook, blah, blah, blah. And so, but when I met the narcissist, um, she had a sibling rivalry, her sister. And her sister ended up getting married right after us. I think a year after we got married. But I knew right from second one, there was a rivalry going on because they competed for the same boys. They were cheerleaders, blah, blah, blah. Okay. It was just obvious you know, commenting on uh, each other's Facebooks. I know at least mine was very envious and very competitive with this person, but really no one else in the family. I just, this person was singled out. Now, she got married right after us, about a year after us. And uh, once she announced that they were trying to have a baby, the fact that I had a vasectomy was in the way. Because right after that, she started praying for us to have a baby. And I said, look, we made an adult decision. We need to be adults about this and live with this decision. This is, this is life. This is, I don't know why you want to have a baby. I didn't put those pieces of the puzzle together. I didn't know who I was dealing with, but let's talk about who I was dealing with. I was dealing with somebody super competitive, who wants to win at all costs. So overnight, it was, let's pray that I get pregnant. And I was like, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I was fixed. And my form of surgery is irreversible. And the doctor said that in front of us. I said, you heard what the doctor said. It's irreversible. I'm going to try to make a long story short. Uh, I became in the way of that goal. She saw the attention that her sister was getting and she wanted that attention. So it was a race to get pregnant. Uh, I wasn't getting her pregnant even after the prayers. And uh, God's not going to allow this to happen, by the way, if you know what I mean. And uh, so long story short, there were two other men involved. Uh, just with the the overwhelming empirical and anecdotal evidence of it all, there was two other men involved. Of course, a new supply and the transitional supply, the supply that's always there, the baby daddy, the baby mama, I call transitional supply because they run to this supply every time the crap hits the fan, every time that there's a fight, blah, blah, blah. So... The evidence was overwhelming after the fact that she used all three of us to try to win this sick game goal. And she doesn't care who is in her way. They don't care who who is in their way. They're going to they're going to win at all costs. So if you can think about your situation, if you can think about. And, and, and view that video because it'll tell you a little bit more if you're confused. Um, the last video that says my story, you need to, to watch that. Uh, so your situation is whoever you were discarded for a reason, a goal or somebody else, 
once that dust settles, uh, they're going to come to their, they come to their senses and go, the grass wasn't greener on the other side. This person ended up being less than my last fuel source. So that's when they entertain. That's when, when they can't attain their goal because mine obviously couldn't get pregnant. Everyone involved is older and less fertile. So she wasn't able to get pregnant. So all that does settle. So she, this is how they think. So she was thinking, now where was I? Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, that's right. I was married uh, to my soulmate. And uh, let's, let's give that a try. Let's give that. This is how they look at human beings, guys. You are just an object. And the world is a stage. And they try to attain their goals by pulling strings in the background, but they always overplay their hand. They always think that they're smarter than everyone else. And they usually get their hand caught in the cookie jar guys because of their grandiose. And so the new supply wasn't able to get her pregnant. The transitional supply wasn't able to get her pregnant. So here we go. And this is what it, this is what it is in a nutshell. And that was my situation, but it, it is flabbergasting, if you can use that word, how quickly they will throw someone away to attain their goal. And in the big picture, they just destroy their lives. They just destroy their lives because they can't think their way outside of their box. Okay. So you'll get a Hoover most likely when the dust settles um they get fired from their job whatever whatever the reason is that they left you once that falls through they're going to try to get especially if they discard you and they uh destroyed they they detonated this nuclear weapon they're gonna they're gonna try to find the mrs b's in the harem garage who bought into all of their lies, all of their trickery, didn't, didn't bother to do any digging. It's the Mrs. A that knows how abnormal this is that will say, you lost out. I don't even know, need to know who you're with. I know you're with somebody. I don't even need to know the reasons. Mrs. A is on their way. Mrs. A is on her way. Stoic Mrs. A, talk to the hand. You made a huge mistake. There is no digging because they don't need to know. I was Mrs. B. I did, I did a lot of digging. I did a lot of research, but, uh, you know, Mrs. A is the way guys, Mrs. A is the way. And I just wanted to get that off my chest. Uh, I don't want to have too long of a video, but guys, I hope this video is helpful. If, If it is, uh, share this video with two people. Someone who you think is going to benefit from this video and subscribe to the channel. Let's get the information out and join the SEAL team. That link is right underneath the video. All right, guys, it's hump day, which means it's downhill all the way to the weekend. You guys be blessed. Join the SEAL team. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to do a video tomorrow, most likely tomorrow. You guys be blessed.